Sermon of His Holiness Pope Jacobus I on Dominica within the Octave of the Ascension, 12 May, 2024 Anno Domini. Commemoration of the Feast of St. Nereus, St. Achilleus, St. Pancratius, and St. Domitilla, Virgin, Martyrs. Today is the Dominica post Ascensione Domini, Dominica after the, uh, the Ascension of Christ our Lord. Um, the epistle is taken from the first epistle of St. Peter the Apostle to the first epistle of St. Peter the Apostle, um, chapter 4. There is Devise, therefore, and watch in prayers, but before all things, having mutual charity, continue among yourselves, because charity covers the multitude of sins, using hospitality one toward another without murmuring. Everyone, as he had received grace, ministering the same one toward another, had good, good dispensers of the manifold grace of God. If any, means, any man speak as the words of God, if any man minister as of the power which God administered, that in all things God may be honored by Jesus Christ. And for today's gospel, which is taken from Gospel St. John, chapter 15. At that time, said Jesus to his disciples, when the paraclete cometh, to whom I will send you from the Father, the spirit of truth which proceeds from the Father, he shall give testimony of me. And you shall give testimony because you are with me from the beginning. These things have I spoken to you, that you be not scandalized. Out of the synagogues they will cast you, but the hour cometh that everyone which killeth you shall think that he doth service to God. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have spoken to you, that when the hour shall come, you may remember them that I told you. That's why the words of today's gospel be seated. When the paraclete come and who I will send, from you, send, you, send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall give testimony of me. In nomine Patri, his Spirit, to Sancti Amen. The Holy Mother Church, the Roman Catholic Church divine institution is today in the catacombs and therefore the only thing that resembles the Catholic is the doctrine that we uh, publish and declare and teach. And that those people who reject them, which is most of the world today, uh, reject the doctrine, reject also the guidance that we receive by the power of the Holy Ghost from God, that is, by the Holy Ghost, and from the Holy Ghost. And therefore, it is not only insult to the Church, as it is as institution, a divine institution, and to our person as it is, but most of all, it is an insult to God, and a rejection of that which God gives to the world in order that the world can be saved. And therefore, when... Uh, People think that they can dictate to the Holy Mother Church what is and what is not Catholic, and then that they are free to make judgment upon the doctrine that the Church teaches they are mistaken and they commit sacrilege in attempting to do so. Because to pass judgment on the teaching of the Church implies that they somehow presume that they might have authority to pass judgment on the teaching that they don't have authority to teach or to declare or to refute or to refuse to obey and so forth. And but that's the way it is today in this world how people are, not how God permits them to be, but how they are. Because obviously when they attempt to de declare themselves arbiters of what the church teaches, they themselves elect themselves as their own teachers, and that, be, that means that they become their own sect and no longer strive to be Catholic. 
That means that they display insincerity in front of God and serve the devil in molesting the church and attempting to destroy the church as the devil strives every day and attacks us in every way he can. God is permitting this situation to uphold the church for our sanctification and for the punishment of those who will lie in front of God that they want to be Catholic and in their deeds they are denying it. So likewise today, when we celebrate this, this uh, Dominica after the Ascension, the preparation of the Holy Mother Church for the Feast of the Pentecost, which comes to the next Dominica, the great feast of the Church, the beginning of the Church, uh, we reflect on what Christ our Lord has promised to the Apostles in today's Gospel. And that He also prepares the Apostles and the Church for those difficulties by mentioning them that they will cast them out out of the synagogues while they try to convert them to the religion that leads to salvation. From that time, that is the Catholic tradition, nothing else. And it will remain as such all the way to the end of the time. Because that's the only religion God has revealed among himself in the New Testament. And therefore, that must be obeyed and practiced and be subject to his church because otherwise there's no chance of salvation possible and neither there is any soul that was a heretic in heaven that's just simply not so there's no heretic in heaven and therefore the general apostasy in today's world is so significantly in magnitude so large so so great so horrifying because precisely people are rejecting the truth himself. They are rejecting God and his church. They don't realize that by doing so, they sever themselves from that chance of salvation. By not recognizing the truth, God is, because God is re, uh, withholding that spirit of understanding from them, and they, already being in mortal sin of heresy, will have no chance of recovery, because God will not help them to recover because that always that part that offends him, that heretical belief that they espouse and profess and believe that is standing in between the divine grace and then their soul. And not only that, but that they have to first and foremost be reconciled to the church, to be admitted into the bosom of the church by testing them in the proper knowledge of the of the Catechism, and whether they truly are sincere to be Catholic. It's not only that they read the Catechism, read, require that they read the Catechism of the Council of Trent, but that they are, they abjure the heresies is a significant ceremony and solemn ceremony as it is, and that they promise obedience to the Holy See and thus and thus, if they come from heresy and they are uh, baptism cannot be confirmed or cannot be trusted. They have to be conditionally baptized and so forth. All these procedures required because the church is very careful about admitting people who just say they are they want to be Catholic, but at the end they are insincere in front of God. But they will never deceive the church and never deceive God Himself, because in their works it will be visible. And what they do, how they help but do not help this church, that will be manifestly so. And that on, those, on those grounds, they will be recognized whether they are the good trees willing to and striving to bear good fruits, or they are the evil trees serving the devil, molesting the church, and harboring all kinds of fraudulent doctrines and, and are disobedient to the Holy Mother Church to our authority as the right to sovereign pontiff, and therefore they reject what God has instituted in the Holy Mother Church, that means the authority to teach, govern, sanctify, and save all men, and the divine mission of salvation of souls. And by doing so, such souls, therefore, sever themselves from that chance of salvation to be truly admitted into the bosom of the Church and to be truly Catholic. Of course, when we compare this 
the teachings, the doctrines, false doctrines, heretical doctrines of the heretics, they none of these require any such thing, and none of these are even eager to teach the truth, much less to uphold it and believe it themselves. There are defects in their so-called sanctuaries and perversion that they espouse, and the fraudulent doctrines that they are willing to uh, disseminate in their service to their master, the devil, then they are set for the fall. And they will be seen much more so. God will permit them to fall even deeper into this so that they could be more and more seen as who they are. That means servants of Satan. So when Christ, our Lord, teaches the apostles to be patient in today's gospel and promises them to send the paraclete, which is the Holy Ghost, paraclete means teacher and comforter, uh, he shows them that that's the will of God. That's how the design, divine design of God is established and how they must follow it. And what will happen that the, the paraclete, he will send him, which is the proof of the dogma, spiritual proof of the dogma of the church that the Holy Ghost proceeds equally from God the Father and God the Son. Otherwise the Son was not able to send the Holy Ghost. Because that's confirmed in other places in the Holy Scripture, but this one in today's Gospel is also significant in that sense of the confirmation. That means that the, the proof of Blessed Trinity, that Christ our Lord, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, teaches the apostles whom he had chosen to be the Church, the Holy Mother Roman Catholic Church from the beginning, among which is that one Pope, first Pope, St. Peter the Apostle. That in itself, that doctrine is confirmed by that very fact what Christ our Lord is saying which stands on the authority of God, Christ our Lord himself. And then he cautioned them not to be scandalized, that what will happen, that means not to be dismayed, not to be afraid, that they will persecute them and treat them badly, and many will suffer martyrdom, and, but at the end they will gain what is the pride, that means eternal salvation of their souls. And that's what they received. All the apostles have had difficulties and hardships and persecutions and mart martyr's death, except uh, St. John the Evangelist, with the exception that he was thrown into a, a huge kettle of uh, boiling oil by the cruel tyrant emperor and came out unharmed and then he was banished into exile to Patmos, island Patmos where he wrote the, the apocalypse. So today when we prepare for the great feast that comes next Dominica, the great feast of the Pentecost, we reflect on the situation as it is the Holy Mother Church is in, and we lament the situation as it is. But at the same time, we are grateful to God that, that when he entrusted that uh, office of the sovereign pontiff to us, unworthy servant, that he foresaw that these will be the difficulties and this is not the beginning of them, but just to continue over years and years of hardships and difficulties as we had to endure. And our endeavor to keep the faith and to teach the doctrine of salvation and preserve the divine deposit of faith entrusted to us by succession to the, to the office of the sovereign pontiff. And therefore the power of the keys is with us. And those who don't believe it, those who don't see that the doctrine that we teach is precisely that by the assistance of the Holy Ghost. 
which God otherwise does not give to his enemies. And that, that on that actually doctrine rests the rest of, of the assistance of God himself. Although God permits the church to go through these difficulties and hardships, yet he is not leaving the church. He continues with us and will help us. Even though we will have some more difficulties and hardships as the devil molests us every day and sabotages things and causes us hardships and stress and so forth. And of course, those who are in devil's hands as his slaves will reject the truth of salvation, who don't want to be truly Catholic. They will learn from God the punishment of their unbelief and disrespect and rejection of the truth of salvation, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition. And when they learn that truth from God in his punishment, they will see that they have failed in determining properly what they must believe and how they must profit, profess, profess in order to please him and be truly part of his church. And that there are very few today is the confirmation of the scriptural reference when Christ our Lord in general terms stated when he will return, when the Son of Man will shall come, shall he think you find faith on the face of the earth. Which is a general statement, not some kind of doctrine that will happen like this, but general statement and warning about the general apostasy that is occurring today. Therefore, those who strive to be true Catholic must do more and must strive to advance even more in sanctity and sanctification of their soul and to be obedient to, our, to the Holy Mother Church to us so that they could be admitted and become true Catholic. In many cases, if not most of the cases, for the first time in their lives. And that, that they have to count it as the greatest mercy of God and be very thankful and grateful to Christ our Lord for that they have obtained it but those who reject our advance our our doctrine our teaching those who reject this our sermons and publications and warnings about the heretics they will have to learn the hard way that since they have rejected the teaching of the church Christ our Lord will reject them because this is his church and we are his vicar. And therefore, when they reject it, they establish themselves as the enemies of God and enemies of the church. And God will not have mercy on them because they offend him and do not cease to offend him and want to have it their way and not his way. In closing, therefore, in, in the end of this sermon today, we would like to admonish those who are still somewhat sincere to do more to learn the faith, to address this Holy See and ask for being admitted, and to leave all the, the assemblies that they formerly belonged to of the heretics. No matter how beautiful the Mass is, no matter how beautiful that fraudulent Mass that is, no matter how beautiful the singing is, those are the allurements of Satan that lures these people is performance, but not the truth. God will not come to those desecrated places and never properly consecrated places. And that is not, they don't have true mass. And therefore, God will not help you in those places and you will only offend them. If you learn the truth, who they are, and don't take care not to frequent such places or not to be present in such places. But that's up to God. Every conversion from heresy is a, is a mercy and a gift of God. And it belongs to him to give. And if he decides that the soul is unworthy of receiving it, he will wait for one, for some time and period of time, even a long period of time. But then the limit of that will be reached. And God will reject that soul probably and absolutely. Because professing themselves to be wise, as St. Paul says it, and others in our place, they became fools. 
they rejecting the truth of salvation to lost such souls. Ungrateful and unbelieving. And God will punish them for it at the end. And it's a said and a very great source of sorrow for us to watch such people. But unfortunately, that's the way it is. It belongs to free will to cooperate with the graces of God. And when people are using that free will and rejection of that truth of salvation and do not recognize the true church, this holy apostolic see of Rome in exile, and us as the rightful sovereign pontiff, they themselves are robbing themselves of that chance, not only of conversion, but chance of salvation. And God will reward them for that rejection accordingly. But those who strive to be true Catholic, we will help them. We will help them to recover from the yoke of Satan by whom they are held at his will. And we will sincerely strive to help them to be true Catholic. If they are willing and sincere to be so, to become so. For, they, for that, we pray to God for strength and divine grace to be able to accomplish that holy task. In the name of the Father, Jesus Christ, the Sancti. Amen.